Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hi guys, this is Jeff at Tradewinds RV. I'm going to be doing your walkthrough. Um, before I get started, I would uh, just going to make a couple of recommendations. Um, definitely recommend a paint and fab protection. Um, the paint protection part of it will protect all your decals from peeling, any, any of your fiberglass from fading. Um, if it does happen, then it gets replaced. Um, the other recommendation I would highly recommend would probably be an extended warranty, especially if you guys plan on keeping this for a long period of time. It'd be a very good idea. All right. We started here with your convenience pack. This is your water pressure regulator. So whatever hose you guys end up getting, I would recommend just leaving this on it. It's going to regulate the water pressure going through the water lines to about 40, 41 psi. Just recommend just keeping that right on your hose. You get a 30 amp adapter as well. That way you can plug into 110. And this is the sewer hose they give you. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not the best sewer hose in the world. So I definitely recommend using your 10% off in the parts store on your date of purchase. This is going to be for your power tongue jack. So basically if the power tongue jack stops working for whatever reason, just take this rubber piece off the top here and then you can manually still get it up and down. This is going to be for your stabilizer jacks. Right there. Only for stabilizing, not for leveling. Um, basically you'd have to level out the front here with the power tongue jack. You might have to back up onto some blocks with your tires. Um, once you do that and you're level, then bring those down just snug to the ground. And those, that's just a three quarter inch. So if you have a cordless drill, if you get a three quarter inch bit, it'd be a lot faster for you. Brand new 24 interstate battery. Which, if you're not using it, I would highly recommend just disconnecting it if you're not going to use the trailer for a couple weeks or a week. Um, you do also have a battery disconnect right there, which is really nice. So just, just turn that off and it'll cut all 12 volts to the system. 230 pound propane tanks. Those are completely filled up for you. Um, if you want to switch over, you will have to just kind of flip this over. That way it draws off the other tank. Power tongue jack. A little docking light there. And then up and down. Another little light right here. Outside shower. It's going to be where all your information is. Basically all your VIN, your tire pressure, and your weight of the vehicle. Um, this is going to be your bulb seal and your wiper seal. Um, we do have wiper seal lube inside the store as well. I would definitely recommend getting that. That way you want to keep that lubed up. Um, I always try to lift up and spray some behind that and then spray the outside of it. And then run the slide in and out a couple times. There's one of your dump stations right there. Looks like that's going to be your grade 2 tank. And 
right there is your second dump station. Um, you're gonna have the gray side right here on the right and the black on the left. I would pull the black first, then pull the gray. Just kind of cleans out that sewer hose. You have your fresh water drain right there. So if you don't have full water hookup, you'll want to put water into your fresh water tank or potable water. And that's where you drain it from. And black tank flush. The way that works is you want to hook that um, water pressure regulator up to that hose. Um, put it in there, turn it on. Make sure that your black tank is open. That way it's draining as it's, it's cleaning the inside the walls of your black tank. Cubby. Back behind this panel is going to be where your water heater and your water pump are. You'll have two valves on the water heater, one valve on the water pump. Um, when you go to winterize, which is right there on the right, you'll want to bypass those valves because right now you're ready to go camping. In the fall or winter time, you want to switch them over. That way you can winterize. It's going to be a fresh water tank or potable water. So that's basically where you're going to fill up if you don't have full hookup at the park. So when you first pull in the park, there's usually a dump station with a fill station. That's where you'd fill up. And then you're strictly only using the water pump. Then you have your city water connection on the left there. Um, so if you have full hookup at the park, that's where you'll hook up and you get water instantly everywhere. I would definitely recommend getting on the roof a couple times a year. Check around your seals. Um, all your vents, just make sure there's no cracks. You also have an option for a backup camera. That's your awning right there, that's fully extended when that flaps at about 90 degrees, that's when I stop. It's usually, you don't want to go any more than that, it will end up rolling up backwards. You have your water heater here, this is your anode rod. What you want to do is you want to put this in first. Right there, screw it down tight, um, hook up to your city water connection, turn it on, open this valve right here on the top, you'll start relieving pressure once water starts coming out of here, you'll know it's filled and you can light it up from inside. You can also light it up outside on the electric side with that button right there. Now to drain it, um, I will always lift this up, let the water drain out, it usually takes about five seconds. Once that's done draining, you know all the pressure's out of it, and then pull this out. And all your water will drain out from right there. Have another little outdoor shower over here, a little spray port. Your outside grill. And you'll basically just hook up to the bottom of the grill. And it'll go right to your quick connect. And you have one right there as well. Exhaust your furnace. You can take the TV off in your living room, put it on this bracket right here, plug into your 110, then put the cable in. access to the back of the refrigerator. Um, I would recommend taking that off maybe a couple times a season as well. Just vacuum it out. You can get screens for all this stuff. Um, same with your exhaust and your water heater cover. Um, just kind of keeps mud daubers and wasps from making nests. Fire extinguisher there, GFI plug. It's gonna be your monitor panel. So when you push these buttons, it'll tell you all your levels. Um, you got your fresh, your black, and yet you do have two gray tanks. Um, interior lights, porch light, awning light, you do have a Wi Fi booster. 
Um, it's gonna be for your water pump if you're dry camping or if you're at a park with no city hookup. That's where you fill up at the dump station, turn that on, then you'll get water everywhere. Um, it's gonna be for your water heater on the gas side and another button for the electric side of it. And you have your slide and your awning in and out. Put back. Stove top, everything is spark. Um, pretty much all you have to do is just put that onto the light position, hit your sparker, and it lights right up. Now for the oven, you do have to hold in the pilot as you're sparking it. And then I just wait for it to light up right there at the coupler and let it warm up for a minute. And then once I do that, I just kind of let off on this, it turns right on. We have some more 110, some USB ports. Place. TV. Now, when you go to program your TV, you have a little antenna booster right there. That green light, you can, there's a button next to it, you push it, it goes off, comes back on. You want to make sure that green light's on when you do your channel search on the TV. Um, it's just going to give you more channels. So, when you program your channels on auto search on air cable, um, you'll probably get anywhere from 18 to 20 channels just depending on where you're at. Radio, that's CD, DVD, Bluetooth. And it does have zones, it has three zones. So zone one will be here in the living area. Zone two will be your bedroom. Zone three is going to be outside. The refrigerator is gas and electric. Right now it's on the electric side of it. If you want it on gas, just push off. If for whatever reason that check light comes on, um, it just means gas isn't getting through the line. I'll usually go to the stove top, light that up, come back to the refrigerator and it usually lights right up. And it looks like this one just lit too. So. Your freezer will probably get cold in about two hours. Your refrigerator, you're looking at more in the line of eight to ten hours. So if you plan on camping, I would probably plug in and turn the refrigerator on the night before, and then switch it over to gas before you leave. It's gonna be where all your fuses and breakers are. Looks like uh, mostly 15s and a couple 40s. I definitely keep some of those on hand just to be on the safe side. Um, when one of those blows, a red light shines next to it. So it's super easy to know which one it is. I would go around, check all your water fittings underneath the sink, your faucets, behind the toilet. Um, going down the road, that stuff does loosen up, so I would just check that periodically. And when in route, I would definitely make sure this is closed because that is glass and it will break. This is going to be your carbon monoxide detector. That runs directly off a of 12 volt. So like I was saying outside, if you're not using the trailer for a period of time, I'll disconnect the battery. Alright you guys, well congratulations on your purchase and have fun camping.